اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه ومن والاه In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful All praises uh, due to Allah May the peace and blessings be upon his Prophet Brothers and sisters in Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh it is again a blessing to come together and to use this opportunity to help us as we live on this earth. And as we all know that we are part of the creations of Allah. Indeed, Allah created us all for one purpose, to worship and to serve him alone. But as Muslims, our entirety, our entire life is an act of worship. قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لا شريك له وبذلك أمرت وأنا أول المسلمين Say to them إن صلاتي my prayer ونسكي my sacrifice ومحياي my living ومماتي and my dying لله is for the sake of Allah لا شريك له there is no deity worthy of worship except him. He has no partners. La sharika la wabidalik. And for this, umirtu, I am ordered. I am commanded. Wa ana awal muslimin and I am the first of Muslims. And because of these brothers and sisters in Islam, ours is the attitude of gratitude, thanking the Almighty Allah for His blessings that we cannot compute them. So right now, wherever you happen to be as a Muslim, yours, it's an act of appreciation. And you and I have been promised when we appreciate, surely more is coming. Brothers and sisters in Islam, this class on Sundays at 12 o'clock is our tafsir class, meaning the interpretation and the explanation of the book which is the Quran the Quran that Allah said لا يأتيه الباطل من بين يديه ولا من خلفه تنزيل من حكيم حميد there is no way perversion distortion will penetrate Qur'an regardless whether the time of its revelation or after because surely it's from the creator of all. And Allah said again, إِنَّا نَحْنُ نَزَّلْنَا الذِّكْرِ وَإِنَّا لَهُ لَحَافِذُونَ Surely we have revealed the Qur'an and surely we shall protect it. And again, إِنَّا عَلَيْنَا جَمْعَهُ وَقُرْآنَهُ فَإِذَا قَرَأْنَاهُ فَاتَّبِعْ قُرْآنَهُ ثُمَّا إِنَّا عَلَيْنَا بَيَانَهُ That the compilation of the Qur'an, Allah said, it is mine. And the recitation of it, Allah said, is mine. I would make it easy. 
for people to memorize. Likewise, the bayan, the explanation of it, Allah said, surely it's mine. I will do it. So Quran, as we always say, and uh, that which has been said over and over by our scholars, it is not meant to be only read ritualistically, but to understand its content, to understand the book, and then implement its ordinance, its commandment. So that is the intent of our spending few minutes together to understand the word of Allah and then to implement it. Last week we read the ayah 267 but we were unable to complete it. But the topic is so interesting that we wrote last week the best is for the best that nallah tayyib la yaqbal illa tayyiba aw kama qala sallallahu alayhi wasallam Allah is surely good and will accept only that which is good and in this ayah, Lord Almighty said, O you who believe, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, O you who believe, anfiku min tayyibatim ma kasabtum. Anfiku, spend min tayyibati from the good ma kasabtum, that which you have earned. Spend out of that which you have legally, halalically earned. Spend. And Allah continued to say, akhrajna lakum. And also spend out of that which we have produced from the earth for you. Wala tayammamul khabitha. But there's a warning here. Do not intend to spend out of that which is left, out of that which is not good, out of that which you are not interested in it. And you, the giver, will not take that which you intend to give. Illa an tugmidu fi except by closing your eyes. Ah, this is, I'm not interested. I'll just take it. No. If you know that something is worthless, if you know that you will not accept what you intend to give, why give? Allah is asking you and I that do not give that which you will not take. Do not give that which is bad. Do not give that which is worthless. Do not do that. وَلَسْتُمْ بِآخِذِيهِ إِلَّا أَن تُغْمِذُوا فِيهِ You will not receive it yourself with happiness except with sadness by closing the eye. وَعَلَمُوا Know that أَنَّ اللَّهَ that surely Allah غَنِيٌ is self-sufficient Hamid, praiseworthy. Self-sufficient Allah does not need what we give, but has promised to reward us 
when we give. Remember that. Allah does not need our generosities. Allah does not need our supplications. Allah does not need our praise. Allah does not need our whatever we give. Allah does not need our zakah, our fasting, our hajj, whatever we've been commanded to do as servants coming from the Creator. Allah does not need them. But we do. Because our generosity will surely come back with more blessings, more generosities. It is even been scientifically proven that your appreciation that your given prolongs your life and gives peace of mind. It has been proven scientifically. So, when we give, and we give generously as Allah said, we are not pleasing Allah alone, but the recipient of our generosity is pleased with our giving. So give that which is good. And the creator of all will be pleased with you. So let's quickly look at the ayah again. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, O you who believe, anfiqu min tayyibati ma kasabtum, spend out of that which you have earned legally. Wa mimma akhrajna lakum min al-ard, and that which we have produced for you from the earth. وَلَا تَيَمَّمُوا الْخَبِيثَ مِنْهُ تُنْفِقُونَ But do not intend to spend from the khabith, that which is bad, intending to spend out of it. وَلَسْتُمْ بِآخِذِيهِ You will not yourself accept it except by closing the eyes. No. That Allah is self-sufficient, praiseworthy. Brothers and sisters in Islam, this surely is the commandment of Allah, the Almighty, that the giver is Allah. And you being the beneficiary, the recipient of it, give good. You have been given good, spend. Spend out of that which is good. But remember, Allah does not need your generosities because he is self-sufficient likewise Allah is praiseworthy when you give he will praise he would mention you in the sight of the angels and you are blessed brothers and sisters in Islam last week when we read this ayah, not knowing that I am going to lose, we are going to miss or lose one of us who has been part of this class since its inception. 
brother Ashraf Chaudhry. Wala nuzaki alallahi ahada. Only Allah knows best. But we will only mention that which we know. And the rest is with Allah. He is one of the best people I ever met in my life. And let's understand again. We are not praising anybody above Allah or what Allah mean and meant for him. But if there is a brother who will never mention anybody with wrong or bad, Allah he does, brother Ashraf children. I have consulted him on many occasions regarding people as an imam we are dealing with people every day but wallahi brother ashraf will never ever mention anybody what wrong i remember one day he came and i was consulting people and did not consult him. He said, Imam, you did not ask me. <laughs> and I said, okay, what do you think about him? And he said, Imam, he's a good person. I said, Brother Ashraf, that is why I'm not asking you. Allah, beautiful brother. In my entire Yes, at ICCD, Islamic Center of the Capital District. Wallahi. I have never had Brother Ashraf mention anybody with their faults. Never. And he is the chairman of Zakah Committee. And I, Imam, being their advisor, we would come and then we will discuss. Whenever you are talking about giving somebody $300, Brother Ashraf is looking, well, Imam, we have a little more money. Let's give him $500. He's always looking at spending more for even those who have asked less because our community is such a generous community as long as one can prove that they, they are in need we give and he is the chairman of zakat committee Beautiful brother. In the line of Tedma, well, Kalba Yahzen, well, I know Kulu Illa Mayurdi Rabbuna, well, in Bifiraka Kaya Ashraf La Mahzunun. In the line of Tedma, tears in our eyes. والقلب يهزن. We are saddened. However, ولا نقول إلا ما يرضي ربنا. We will not say but that which our Creator will be pleased with. That surely وإنا بفراقك يا أشرف لمهزنون. Ashraf, we are saddened 
for your departure. We pray and ask Allah the Almighty to forgive you of your sins and to have mercy on you and to bless whatever you have left. Of those beautiful children who love you so much, beautiful grandchildren who love you so much, and our sister, our aunt, our mother, Sister Zarina. Both are always together where there is righteousness. Both attend this class most of the time if they are here. If Brother Ashraf and his wife are not in the class on Sunday at ICCD, then automatically everybody knows that they have traveled. Or other emergencies. May Allah, Sister Zarina, may Allah give you patience and bless you and reward you with your patience. Now, what had happened to this brother, Brother Asher of Chaudhry? Wallahi, I never ever experienced it. And let me share with you a few. When my wife called me and informed me in the facility that there is an emergency, you need to come back home quickly. I said, why? She said, no, you need to come. So I came out, called her, and she told me, this is the situation, Brother Ashraf is hospitalized in emergency ward. And at that time, his son had called me and left a few messages. Brother Amir. So I called back and they said, Imam, we just left the hospital. Uh, your brother is not doing good. Please pray for him. And I asked him, do you need me right now? Said, yeah, we would appreciate in few. So inshallah, I drove, came to the house. We discuss and we are waiting for the rest of the family. Allahi on Thursday, we went to the hospital, Ellis Hospital. All of us, I mean myself, Sister Zarina, his wife, and the three children. We all went there. And one thing for sure, he was in coma. And the doctors are predicting that any moment from now, he will die. And this is the brother that we met two weeks ago at the masjid. At Juma. Two weeks ago, I was with him at the masjid. And he said to me, Imam, I've been calling you. You are not returning my call. And I asked him, Brother Ashraf, which phone, which number are you using? He said, the other number. I said, well, that is why. Please get this. Give him my number. Two weeks ago. And there was no any symptom, any experience, any sign that this is going to be the last meeting. There was no sign. Yes, 
no sign. So you and I, there perhaps may not be sign. Let's do that which is right. So, and when he was sick, because it came so quickly, some of us thought perhaps it is COVID-19, but he, they did the test and he was negative. And they did it again, he was negative. So on Thursday, we went to the hospital. Was, he was lying. And I started to recite Quran. And Sister Zarina will tell you very clearly. When I started reciting the Quran, we had a beep. So the nurses came in. Sister Zarina was looking at me. I was looking at her. What's going on? Our brother is coming back. Alhamdulillah. But no. So we continued to recite. I continued to recite when the children are coming in and out because they will not allow all of us in. Brothers and sisters in Islam, I read Surah to Yasin seven times. Like it never happened in my entire life. I never had the opportunity to actually recite Yasin seven times with my mom. Never had the opportunity to recite Yasin even one time with my father. Never had that opportunity and never happened to me. But I recited Yasin seven times. And I gave khutbah on Friday at ICCD. When I got to woman nu'ammiruhu nunakisu fil khalq, afala ya'kilun. Allah said, if we prolong your life or him whom we've given long life, he surely becomes weak and weaker. Don't they think? We love to leave. None of us will like to die. But as we leave, Allah is telling us, as we leave long, so our body is getting weak and weaker. When I got to that ayah, everything stopped. Our brother is dead. Telling us very clearly that all of us, surely a day would come when we will also join him, young or old. If you are young today, remember one of two things would happen, either you would be old tomorrow or die before tomorrow. Brothers and sisters in Islam, I read Yasin seven times. Never happened to me. Now, perhaps somebody would argue, well, Imam, why do you read actually Yasin? Well, if you read our books, indeed, not only reciting Yasin, but I also, you know, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, uh, you know, and because him whose last words 
ولا اله الا الله محمد رسول الله surely he is guaranteed jannah so i was saying that لا اله الا الله لا اله الا الله لا اله الا الله محمد رسول الله لا اله because when those words becomes your last words surely you are promised jannah but yasin the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said yasin qalbul quran yasin is the heart of the quran and imam ahmad the leader rough scholars who have written who are literalist you know the the leader the imam of al sunnah had quoted that كان المشيخ يقولون اذا قرات يعني ياسين ان الميت خفف الله عنه بها when yasin is recited for a dying person death becomes easy for them this is the statement of imam ahmad bin hanbal and of course I am quoting from Tafsir Ibn Kathir and also our scholars some of them have said wa qala ba'd al-ulama Ibn Kathir said min khasa'is hadhihi as-surah anna la tuqra inda amr asir illa yassarahu Allah ta'ala part of the unique characteristics of surah yasin when recited during difficulty easy will appear easy surely will come so it has been narrated it has been reported that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said surely iqra'u ala mautakum mautakum surah yasin recite on your loved ones who are dying surah yasin but remember what i said i've never done it before and this issue is a point of disagreement among scholars reciting yasin for a dying person but there is no unanimity on this hadith to have somebody will say imam why are you doing something that which is not authentic well remember what i said there is no unanimity on the matter that this hadith is weak because when there is unanimity then we can argue but you know my methodology my methodology is respecting our scholarship likewise respecting our differences that is how I am trained. So let's look from Bulugh al-Maram of Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani. And Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani is the teacher rough scholars of hadith after him. No scholar of hadith will write without the contribution of ibn hajar al asqalani of the 7th century he has been tried over and over this scholar is a scholar now if you mention the 20th century scholars like ibn baz may allah have mercy on him uh nas shaq nasr din albani may allah have mercy on him uh, shaq uthaymin uh, may allah have mercy on him and other scholars of the world when you mention them ibn hajar al-asqalani is their teacher that is surely known they never wrote without quoting ibn hajar al-asqalani now listen to what ibn hajar said pertaining to these hadith وعن معقل معقل بن يسار رضي الله تعالى عنه ان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال اقرأوا اقرأوا 
على موتاكم ياسين اقرأوا على موتاكم ياسين رواه أبو داود والنسائي وصححه ابن هبان go find بلوغ المرام of ابن هجر الأسقلاني he said it is surely reported by Abu Dawood and Nisa'i and Ibn Hibban authenticated it. So, meaning there is no unanimity regarding the authentication of this hadith. Some who have said weak, fine, we respect their opinion. But I'm going with the opinion of the teacher of teachers of hadith. Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani who quoted it and said it has been authenticated by Ibn Hibban. So this hadith, اقرأوا على موتاكم ياسين is authentic from our perspective. And we respect the other opinion. So if you have the opportunity of your loved one dying, if Allah has blessed you to know your sin, recite it. Help him with the recitation of Surah to Yasin because we've been encouraged to recite it. Remember I said, I respect our different opinion. Our scholarship, I am a lover of scholarship. You never hear from me castigating, assassinating any scholar's character. Never. Ours is humility. And ours is appreciation. So I recited Surah to Yasin for Brother Ashraf Chaudhry seven times. Alhamdulillah, may Allah bless him bless us with the recitations we pray O oh allah have mercy on him allahumma gfir lahu warham allahumma in kana muhsinan fazid fi ihsani wa in kana musi'an fatajawaz an sayyi'atihi bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin O oh allah have mercy forgive our brother ashraf chaud and bless Whatever he left, his children, grandchildren, oh Allah bless them, give them patience and protect them after him. And also we pray, oh Allah, when our time comes, take our lives as Muslims and raise us amongst the righteous ones. Brothers and sisters in Islam, wherever you happen to be, be right, do right, and spend right. Allah loves that which is right. Do not give that which is not good. Give good, and Allah will be good for you and for your family. So recite Surah Yasin on or over your loved ones that are passing or have passed. May Allah protect us all. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana tawkina adhaab al-nar. Insha'Allah we'll see you again on Friday for those who come to our counseling session Friday 7 o'clock every Friday 7 p.m. New York time and our tafsir class every Sunday at 12 o'clock p.m. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanata wa fil akhirati hasanata wa kina adhaab al-nar. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Assalamu ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.